How to block two sweaters using the steam and wet blocking techniques. Hello to anyone who is joining me this morning. I am going to show you how to block these two sweaters in two different techniques. This one I'm going to wet block and this one I'm going to steam block. So I've got my iron set uh, full of water and set on steam, hot and ready to go. I've also got a big bowl and a pitcher of water and a pot of my Rapture all natural, oops, all natural delicate wash. And this is the actual item that comes with every yarn purchase. And what it is, is a one-time use, single-use pod of Rapture All Natural Delicate Wash, which is incredible for washing or blocking your hand knit or hand crocheted sweaters, and also for um, laundering anything else that's delicate, which could be anything from your natural fibers in cashmere and silk, to delicate lace or delicate, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Anything that's delicate, you could do um, tablecloths out of it. You could do your sheets out of it. You can actually, it's also really great for anything that has elastic in it because the harsh chemicals and detergent will break down the elastic and you'll lose the shape. So it's great for swimwear, athletic wear, and that sort of thing as well. Anyway, so today we're going to use one pot of Rapture, which is enough to wash and block one of these sweaters. So I'm just going to tear the top off and squeeze it right into the bowl. It's highly concentrated, so that's all you'll need. And you can also use that one size for washing a sink full of your delicates. Uh, it's highly concentrated. One of those is about a teaspoon. So if you bought the bottle, one teaspoon would be about the equivalent. So we're going to fill the bowl with some room temperature water and just submerge our sweater right into it. <clears throat> so we'll let that sweater sit for a few minutes. And while we're doing that, we'll get started on our second sweater that we're going to steam block. We've got our iron full of water and set on the hottest setting for steam. And I'm gonna set out a towel for working on. So one other thing we're going to be using today is our tape measure to make sure that we're getting our finished measurements correct. Okay, so I'm going to set the sweater out, giving it approximately the shape that I have intended. And what's going to happen is by blocking, I'm going to be able to stretch out a lot of this lace, get the bands on the ends to lay flat. And so I'm just going to start by winding up the steam. and just gently getting the steam on the sweater. I don't want to press hard on the sweater because I don't want to smash the stitches. And we're going to do this back and forth in steps. So I've got some steam on it now, so now I can come back in and stretch it out a little bit. <clears throat> in a minute here, I'm going to double check that my measurements are not being compromised by any of this stretching. I want to make sure I'm stretching in the right directions in the right spots of the sweater. Okay, so we'll do the underarm first, which is our major we're at 1735. When I measure across 17, that means that it's double that for the bust circumference, which would be 35. And that's what was intended for this sweater. So, yay! <laughs> okay, so it's time to give it another.
There's no right or wrong technique for blocking a garment. You can use the steam blocking technique like I'm using. You can do a mist blocking, which is putting water in a spray bottle and just spraying uh, your garment, or the wet blocking, which I'll show you next. Any one of these is absolutely fine for blocking any particular piece. Sometimes the more delicate pieces uh, are fine with the lighter methods. When I say lighter, I mean misting and steaming. I would consider the lighter methods of blocking, and then the wet blocking would be the most rigorous and that would be better for bulky items or anything that has just a little more bulk or weight to the fiber. Not that it can't work beautifully for lace as well. I could have done this sweater in that technique as well. I just wanted to be able to show you two different techniques in this demonstration. Okay, now if you were worried about how this was going to stay when it's blocked, you could definitely pin the pieces down. I don't think this one's going to move much, so I feel comfortable leaving it. And what I'm going to do is give it one more quick steam, and then I'm going to lay it, just leave it flat to dry. <clears throat> and on a piece that's steam blocked, it really doesn't take much time for it to dry either. So this is a really quick method. If you were wanting to wear this same day, it would be no problem at all. Okay. So I'm just gonna roll this into the towel so I can move it. It's going to move this out of our way so we can get started on the other towel. I'm sorry, <laughs> not the other towel, the other sweater. Okay, so now we've got this sweater that's been soaking in the water bath with Rapture. And I want to pull it out of the water and squeeze it as I go, making sure that I don't wring the fabric. If you wring the fabric, what happens is you compromise the stitches and you could even damage them. So you want to make sure you don't do that. Okay, we're going to get the water out of the way now and grab a towel. I'm just going to see if I can squeeze a little more water out of there. Okay. So now we're going to place it in, into one of the towels, like that. And roll it up. And by putting pressure on the sweater inside the towel, we're able to express the moisture and the water out of the sweater and into the dry towel. And because we're not wringing and we're just pressing, you could put as much weight on this as you wanted to. You, I've been known to stand on this at times just to get as much pressure as I can to express the water out of the sweater and into the dry towel. Okay, that's about as much as we're going to get today. So now I will lay out another towel, a fresh dry towel. Then we'll get our sweater out. And we're going to start playing around with it to get our finished measurements. And I'm just going to start by eyeballing it and then I'll grab my tape measure. OK, 
Okay, this one's 17 across for a 35 inch bust measurement, which is what I was going for, so good. Okay, this one needed to be eight. I'm gonna pull it in this direction so it can dry. There we go. Now we're at eight. Because as you, when you pull in this direction, you shorten in this direction. When you pull in this direction, you shorten in this direction. So you wanna just make sure that you're doing it evenly to not compromise any of your dimensions. Now this is a piece that I'm designing, but I do have finished measurements in mind. If you're following a pattern, you'll already have your finished measurements written, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping your piece to the finished measurements. If you're having trouble with it staying in place, you could pin along the sides and the bottom, the entire perimeter. That's a great way to hold it in place while it dries. Now this type of piece, because it's a lot um, more wet than the other piece was, we're going to let it sit for a little bit longer to dry. Uh, getting it in the sun would help. Getting it under a fan will help. If you have a ceiling fan, that's a great way to get things to dry quicker or even a uh, stand-up oscillating fan. Any, either way, they help tremendously in getting uh, blocking pieces to dry. I think I see a question. You're new to blocking projects and greatly appreciate the videos. Good, I'm glad, Erin. Question though, when you steam block that first sweater, won't it make a crease when you're folded it over in the towel? Yes, I, I just was doing that to move it out of the way for the video. I'm going to lay it out flat again. Um, I wanna make sure that it blocks completely flat. So that's a great question. That was just to get it out of the view of the camera so that we could start this one. I will show, now that this one's ready to sit out, I will bring that one back so that they can dry next to each other. <clears throat> And when I bring it back out, this would be a good time to re-fluff it with the uh, iron if need be. I don't see any major kinks, but I'll just give it a, a once over anyways, just to be sure. Whoops. I also don't mind doing this on the wet ones too. Somehow I like the idea of the little bit of steam still. Okay, so now I'm gonna get these under a fan. And if you put them under a fan, you could actually get even this one dry in one day. Um, this one will be dry within the hour. This one could be a day or two, depending on the humidity and temperature in your area, and also the amount of moving air. So getting it under a fan would be tremendously helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, whether I watch this live or in playback, I will get notifications of your questions and I'm happy to help you learn how to block sweaters in any way that I can. Thanks for watching today. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos.